We interrupt the Subnautica montage to bring you a special message. Are you sick of those wimpy vehicles armed with baby torpedoes and rubber fists? Or do you just wish that you had a giant mech suit to wreak havoc on planet 4546B? Well boy do I have the solution for you. Super Prawn, the latest greatest Subnautica mod that nobody asked for. Available now for three easy payments of absolutely nothing. Handcrafted by somebody who's played way too much Subnautica for no good reason. But don't listen to me, I'll let him tell you all about it. Hey everyone, Dave or FETV here. You may know me from, well, I guess all the other videos on my channel. Like that one about Subnautica. Or that other one about Subnautica. Or maybe one of my videos about countless other games. Uh, who am I kidding? Subnautica dominates my most viewed tab. I had the idea of turning the prawn suit into a proper giant mech suit. You know, completely break the game and its intended design, but in the best way possible. So I set out to do just that. And after countless hours coding, testing, and breaking the game in a hundred different ways, it's finally done. Now I'll explain how I did it later, but first of all, what does the mod actually do? Here you can see the in-game settings menu for the Super Prawn mod. All of the switches and sliders you could want to create your own overpowered prawn suit. Infinite health, energy, and torpedoes are pretty self-explanatory. Why worry about silly things like damage or power when you're in an unstoppable mech? Super Jump Jets really spices up the boosters on the regular Jump Jets. Below Zero had the good idea to turn these up a bit, but my mod turns them up way more. Because why not? Flying to the top of the Aurora or Mountain Island is a breeze. And of course the Jump Jet upgrade module will make them even more ridiculously powerful. Next up we have Improved Ambient Light. When you're flying around the map at mock speed, it can get really hard to see what's in front of you. This adds a weak light with a huge radius around the prawn, allowing you to see much better and not constantly run into things every few seconds. After that is expanded FOV. This one just increases the camera's field of view while you're piloting. Not only for show, but because driving a giant prawn suit is surprisingly hard with limited FOV. Did I mention you can make your prawn suit enormous? Well, driving the prawn at greatly increased sizes becomes almost impossible with the normal movement controls. So I added in an advanced movement system that gives you much more control over how everything handles. Tweaking the speed is really up to your own preference. I'd recommend higher speeds if you're going with a larger suit to offset the clunkiness the bigger sizes cause. Next up we have all the arm modifiers. Punch damage and range apply to the default claw arms the prawn comes with. Being able to one-shot reapers and blast gasopods across the map never loses its appeal. Which reminds me, I added better ragdolls to things too. Instead of becoming immovable floating objects, you can now punch ragdolls into the sunset, or drill them in infinitely amusing circles. This is extra fun on leviathans, payback for all those attacks you've endured in the past. You can also use it to clear cut kelp forests, like an underwater lumberjack robot or something. You've also got settings for making the grappling hook reel in much faster, as well as adding ridiculously strong forces to the propulsion cannon. It's hard to appreciate this fully, because as soon as you launch a creature into the distance it gets unloaded from the game for being too far away. After that is one of my personal favorites, Torpedo Cooldown Time. Normally, the game makes you wait up to 5 seconds in between firing each torpedo. With the power of code injection, I was basically able to remove that logic, letting you shoot every .1 second. That's up to 20 torpedoes a second if you're using both arms. Pairs great with infinite torpedoes, of course. It's also great at absolutely tanking your frame rate if you spam it, but that's on you. And last but certainly not least is the prawn size multiplier. You can go from normal prawn suit all the way up to 10x the regular size. At that size you're taller than the aurora and will be well above the water in any of the shallow zones. It also makes getting down to places like the lost river nearly impossible. But you can always reload the game with a smaller size and it'll update accordingly. 2 or 3x is probably the sweet spot here, but 10 is worth trying out just for fun. Actually, just try turning all the settings up to max for the truly unstoppable giant mech experience. You won't regret it. So now you've seen what the mod can do, but how did I make it? Maybe you want to make a mod of your own. Or maybe you're just interested in how games are programmed behind the scenes. As we all know, people hate looking at code in videos, so I'm going to go through this part super fast. You can skip ahead or stick around to see what I have to say. You see, Subnautica is made in Unity with code written in C-sharp. 
Unity uses the Mono compiler to compile all that code down into DLL files that the executable can run. Harmony is a tool that lets you overwrite code in DLL files with your own functions. It's cool that you can overwrite the code that the developers programmed and all, but it doesn't just come for free. Harmony can't just be run on any game, it needs to actually be injected first. Luckily the fine folks at QMod Manager have found a way to hack Subnautica and get a Harmony injection up and running. With that step out of the way, I can use a program called dnspy to decompile those DLL files and look at the game's actual code. I find a function I want to patch and get to work. For example, here's some code I used to patch the claw arms on hit function. I override my own damage and range values, patch it on top of the original code, and it's working in the game. Plus I added the ability to launch ragdolls when you hit them. That's three major feature changes, all by changing one function that the developers wrote. Now I am glazing over the hours of testing, research, and constantly restarting the game to get everything working. It is a ton of effort for little payoff, but it's surprisingly fun working with all the game's code. Now there's way more to it that I'm not explaining, but the non-programmers are probably falling asleep by now. If you're interested in learning more, I'll link a beginner's guide to Subnautica modding in the description. So with that out of the way, cue the montage. So that's the Super Prawn mod in a nutshell, breaking the game in the best ways possible. Letting you do things like stand directly on top of the Aurora as it explodes, or speed through the world so fast that it can't load, causing you to fall straight through the map. Plus, those 1000x damage multipliers are enough to take down just about anything in one hit. Interestingly, the only things I couldn't one-shot were the Sea Emperor babies. Reapers, Ghost Leviathans, and even Sea Dragons all go down in a single punch but those little guys can take that first hit like it's nothing. I think it's pretty obvious that you shouldn't use this mod on your first run through the story, but it's great for messing around after that. Think of it as a cure for thalassophobia. Leviathans just aren't spooky anymore once you've blasted them across the map in a single punch. I'll leave a link to the mod in the description if you want to try it out. And don't worry if you've never installed a Subnautica mod before. It's super easy, just follow the instructions on the page. And if you have any dumb ideas for Subnautica mods, or mods for any other game for that matter, let me know in the comments. I'm not just gonna go code every bad idea I see, but you might inspire someone else out there to do it. If you've been following my Twitter, you might have seen the little clips I posted while I was making this mod. I like to share smaller updates there in between big videos, including the game I've been working on. As always, if you want to help support the channel, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. I've got a lot of other Subnautica videos in the past, plus a ton of different games that I've covered that aren't Subnautica. Anyways, I think that about wraps this one up. I'll see you all in the next one. Launch in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.